Hello, so in this video, I'm going to showcase how to edit the Relevant Furniture Technologies website. This website is using WordPress, and with WordPress, this allows you uh, to edit all the content that you need in order to keep your site fresh and up to date with the latest and greatest of what you want to offer to the world. So the first thing uh, I typically like to do is I like to have two tabs open. The first tab containing the, the, the website that you can see and that what everybody else sees from the outside. Um, the second tab would essentially be the, the tab where you're going to work and make your changes. Now, in order to get to this particular login page, which is the login to your website, you would type in your website. Now, as an example, as of right now, we're working off of my development server. But uh, when the site goes live, you would type in your website URL. So let's say it's xyz.com. Uh, and then you would do forward slash wp wp dash admin so in this case it's dev six dot revolution chicago dot com and then forward slash wp dash admin and it's uh dev six at revolution dot com only because that's my development server so this is the part that you would change um to reflect your domain name and then you type in forward slash wp dash admin and if you type it in correctly you should get a uh, a login screen just like this. So I'm gonna pause the video for security purposes and put my credentials in. So once you log in, you should see a screen similar to this. It's basically your dashboard, your your main control panels that allows you um, to edit your website. All the options that you have to edit your website are on your left hand side. In each me side menu item represents a specific component of your website. So um, the first component I want to go over is the post. So if I click on post, as of right now, there are some dummy data that's inserted into your website. The post represents blog posts. And essentially what we did is we made your news section of your website a, a blog, essentially. It's a blog that doesn't allow commenting. commenting. So we kind of used the blog mechanism, mechanism but uh, for cost-saving purposes, we didn't entirely um, open up all the features but it allows you to create all the different types of news latest news articles that you would need so let's say I wanted to create a news article a, a new new news article so um, the title which would show up on your website this part right here uh, would be inserted here so I'll just type in something simple so news title and essentially um, this content area here is what shows up in this section here and this is just like Word so you can type anything that you like uh, just like Microsoft Word and just like uh, Microsoft Word you can bold italicize it um, you could change the font size you could even change the font color with you know easy to click uh, buttons and you wouldn't have to do any programming um, to make things hyperlink um, you just highlight certain words you click on this link icon here and you could then type in the URL that you want the site to go to and if it's an internal page like let's say I want that uh, that line of text to go to the contact page you would just you know type in contact and essentially click on this one it's content and it's a page type so that's the one I want to click I have the option to have it so the hyperlink opens up a new tab but I don't want that so I'll just go ahead and click on add link and as you can see that, that text there is purple and it's underlined which signifies that it's a hypertext um, and you have lots of flexibility with WordPress on things that you can do like adding bullet points um, you can even you know right align certain things or center things you could even wrap things in quotes if you wanted to Let's see if that works I think it doesn't show, but I think those are going to be quotes once uh, once we publish. And um, a couple of things I wanted to showcase is you can also add images, which is very easy. Um, put your cursor where you want the image to be. And uh, you would click on Add Media. And adding images are is, is as simple as going to your desktop and dragging and dropping the image that you have. So I have an image, a sample image that I have on my desktop, and all I have to do is drag it into 
the uh the, this area and once you see it changes to drop files to upload just let it go you can see it upload and over here on the right hand side you have a couple options that you can do uh with the image you can have it linked to something uh, and it could be anything. It could be a hyperlink. It could be a link to a bigger version of the image. As of right now, I'm going to click on None. I'll like it to have it to be the full size. I can give it a title if I wanted to. Um, caption, alternate text, and descriptions are, are nice to have uh, for SEO purposes. Um, but right now, I'm just going to leave it blank for demo purposes. And um, click on Insert to Post. Once I... Once I do that, you can see that the image is now on the page, and that's basically it. Um, so it's pretty simple. I mean, I could even have it centered or left aligned or right aligned. So um, in terms of date, and the date shows up right here, typically your news date, you will probably post the news on a day that you know it happened. So in, in that case, I could just publish it, and it would use today's date, which is uh, March 19th, 2015. But I can also set the date to be something else. So I could either publish immediately or I can click on edit. And if I know that I'm working on a news article but I don't want it to go live right now, I can set a date in the future. So I could set it to 21st, uh, which is two days from now. I can also set, in, set the time. And I can click on OK and it will be scheduled, meaning that when I click on schedule, it won't show up on a live site. But until that date that I uh, schedule it occurs. But just to show proof of concept, I'm going to have it um, scheduled for immediately. So I'm going to do that and click on publish. And wait for it to be finished publishing. And then once I go to the, my first tab, which shows the, the website, and click on refresh, I can see that the image shows up. So that's our quote, so that needs to be uh, cleaned up a little bit. So instead of using the block quote, let's just do quotes like this, and that should also um, suffice for what we needed to do. So there you go. So these are for demo purposes, and your latest, your latest news articles will show up to, towards the top, so it is in descending order. And so, you know, March 2nd, 2014 and January 5th, 2015, February 5th, 2015, and so forth. You can always go back to all posts and go back and edit all your previous posts as so. So let's say I want this to be a uh, different color, so make it all orange so it sticks out. Also make it bold. Click on update. Once it finished update, if I refresh, one of these posts should be orange. So it's, there you go. So this one's orange. So that's that's how you would uh, basically modify the news section. Um, in terms of the website, the latest news will automatically pull from whatever's at the top, the latest news article on your news page. So that functionality is, is built in. It'll strip out any type of styles and, and, and bullet points just to keep things consistent and, and, and make sure it fits the page nicely on, on the home page. Um, but on the actual news page, it will format the way you have it formatted in your back end. So that's basically it um, in terms of just cleaning things up a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and trash the, uh, the new test news articles that we just created. So there you go. So now it looks nice and clean. So that's essentially um, your news section. So for news section, just go to post. And from there, that's where you edit all your news articles. The next area that I want to go over is content areas. And what content areas are, and the main ones that you will most likely be editing, is the services right of slider, about right of slider, and contact right of slider. And what what content areas are is they're areas of content that represents a portion of the page, but it, it's not it's not the main portion. So we have services right of slider. So let's go to services, and I, and I keep my naming conventions pretty straightforward so that it's easy to figure out. Oh, service right of slider that must mean a content 
portion of the services page and it's the right side of the slider. So on the right side of the slider, we see that there's these two pictures here. So if I hover over a services right up slider and I click on edit, here in the main portion, we have this image that represents this image here. And let's say I, so essentially what this is, is it allows you to swap out these images. So this image here represents two smaller images. And let's say you had some new images that you wanted to change. Um, my recommendation is to um, click on the image and click on this pencil that allows you to edit it. And then um, here you want to click on edit original. And then right here, let's see, maybe that's not the best approach. Let me just take a quick look at this. Edit and then edit original. Yeah, actually, instead of edit, you would want to replace because you're not really editing the image in terms of editing the existing image. You want to replace it with an entirely new image. Um, so what you want to do is first know what, what the sizes are because what you want to do is swap out this image with another image of the exact same size. That way you can uh, guarantee that the placement of the image is still going to work and it's not going to be too big or too small and, and things like that. So when you uh, get to this page, and let me just go over it again because I know it was confusing before. You click on the image that you want to replace. Um, there is an edit. Once you click on it, this little panel here will show up. You want to click on edit and then you want to click on replace um, in order to, to replace the image. And here it will show you what type of image it is. It is a JPEG type image because there's different types of uh, image sizes. So you want to best match the image type that you're replacing. So this is a JPEG, .jpg, and the dimensions are 273 by 384 pixels. Um, 273 represents the width, 384 represents the height. Um, so once you have another image of the exact same width and height as well as the image type, what you want to do is you want to click on Upload. You want to click on Choose File. And here in, in this window, unfortunately it does not allow that nice drag and drop feature that I showed you before for the, for the news slash you know, post. Here you would just go and, and search for your image. Let's say this is the right one. Click on open and essentially you would just upload the image. And it basically what it does, it, it, it'll replace the image. It'll swap out the old image with the new image. And since the file size is, the file dimensions are the same and the file type is the same, you should not have any problem swapping this image out. So content areas essentially is uh, how you would edit those right of the slider images. So there's one for services, about, and contact. So services has one, the about page over here has one, and the contact has one. And those are, and you know, WordPress gives you the option to swap these images out. So that, that should be pretty straightforward. All the other ones are a little bit more tricky, um, and they would require a little bit more thorough programming understanding of how to swap out. So for example, the get updates is basically a short code. The get updates represents the uh, get update drop uh, text box area here, which when somebody types in their email address, it'll automatically email the owner of the site the email address. Um, and that's not as easy as a you know a drag and drop like like the swapping out the image. Um, the be social is essentially these these buttons here, and they are a little bit requires some coding. There's some coding aspects to that, so those aren't going to be easily swappable. But you know the things that aren't swappable, like like be social and get updates, those are like once and done type deal. So um, very rarely would you want to change those. So they're not uh, critical to have it be changed. But I can see the you know the right of slider type images possibly being changed and it's easier for somebody who's not technical to change them. So again, in terms of content areas, just focus on the first three 
and uh, which are the right of slider images. Um, the next thing I want to go over is pages. So pages actually represents the actual page content to your site. So if I go to the about page, this here, this over here is basically the uh, content that you would be able to change under pages. So if I go to pages, hover over the about page, and click on edit, you can see that the, um, the content here is very, very similar to the content that you see here. So uh, pretty straightforward, just like um, just like Microsoft Word, whatever you want to um, edit, you just go ahead and edit. Uh, the one thing I, I do recommend um, to, to kind of uh, just keep in mind is if you're trying to edit content that has special formatting, um, it might not be as straightforward um, because you might not know exactly or you might forget you know, what the exact formatting type is. I mean, you can always find out by hovering over or highlighting the actual image and looking up here to see, you know, what's what's the difference is like this is 28 pixels, which kind of explains why it's a little bit bigger than everything else. And this one is bold and 28 pixels. But, you know, sometimes it's if you don't do this pretty often, you kind of forget, you know, oh, how do I find out, you know, what kind of font type or whatever this is. What I recommend is highlighting uh, the content and leaving the first and last character and then just editing just the middle part just editing the middle part and that way you retain the actual styling of the text without worrying about what that styling is and delete the last character and delete the uh, first character and then once you're happy with the change click on edit and that's easier than uh, let me just reverse this process you know deleting everything and hoping that everything stays the same because it might not, you know, depending on, on if you press enter or or do other things. So again, I recommend just highlighting highlighting just the middle part, leaving the first and last character, and editing the middle and then deleting the first and last character. And that applies to you know any type of weird um, font styling. Like here's just bold, this part's italicized, just to be safe. Highlight just the middle part, make your changes, delete the first and last. So this is my recommendation. I'm just going to reverse everything. Um, and that's basically um, how you would edit the, the main pages. So let's see if there's other trickier pages that might need attention in terms of uh, page content. So for the uh, products, let's go over products because there are some, um, some tricks to that. So with the pages, again, if you don't click on update, none of your changes actually save. So if you're happy with your changes, click on update, go to the front, or go to your website, refresh, make sure the changes uh, took place, and you, then you can move forward. Um, so let's go back to all pages, and let's look at products. So under, so on products, there's products, and then there's these indentations of the specific products that are. Um, that are essentially they are the products, but it's not the product main page. It's not when you click on products you get it's basically these side items and we'll go over this uh, shortly so for the products page just let's hover over products and as you can see the font here looks a little bit different than what you see here automatically WordPress will detect if um, if you said as a hyperlink even though it's blue in the back end it is a it is. Uh, it, it does turn red um, on, on the page, so don't worry about trying to make these red. It'll naturally make all hyperlinks red. So that's that's something that um, you just want to make sure to do or realize. Also, if you make changes to certain text here, let's just say, um, let's say I added like a period right here and add some more text here. Because there's a lot of duplication on the site in terms of the content, so this uh, Grab American Desk Company, that text here shows up on a lot of the other pages. When you make changes, just make sure you make changes to all your pages. Each of these pages uh, have the text um, 
typed over again, although there's minor changes in terms of the order. So, you know, Desk Maker has Desk Maker, the paragraph towards the top, while Innovative Office products uh, have that product towards the top and so forth, but the content's repeated over and over just in different order. So when you make text changes, the rule of thumb is you're probably going to have to make it in five places. So one, two, three, four, plus the main product page itself. Um, so that's something to uh, keep in mind. Now this gives us the flexibility so that um, in the future, if STIR is supposed to have just information about STIR, you have that ability instead of trying to repeat all the content over um, all of them. So that that's that's something that you can um, have the flexibility doing it later. But again, all the content is it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to leave this page, not make any saves. Um, let's see if there's other things that we want to adjust. Uh, the contact page, let me go over that a little bit because it's kind of weird because you also have a contact form. So if I go to contact, click on edit. As you can see, the content of the page is really just this part. So you're not going to see the contact form as you see it here. It is represented through this little uh, coding thing that you probably just leave alone. You probably would want to leave that alone. Um, but here you would edit your contact information. Now the one thing I do want to want to showcase um, because there is a difference in WordPress in between um, doing a return uh, enter versus a shift enter. If I click on enter it's actually going to do a, a paragraph break I believe it's what it's called where it will essentially do two line breaks. So if I click on enter you see that there's there's spacing but if you do shift enter it's just a single line break so it just goes to the next line so something to keep in mind when you're trying to edit content and you're pressing the enter key and the spacing is just off uh, by a line just re remember shift enter versus enter so play around with that make sure uh, it, it's doing what you want like here on the contact page these are all shift enters um, that's that's what made me uh, kind of remember oh let's go over shift enter versus enter I'm not going to make any changes, so I'm just going to leave this page. Um, we can go over contact. Uh, contact is basically your forms. So it's essentially this part here, as well as on the home page, the get updates. These are two forms that when somebody fills out, will send an email to the owner of the website. And let's just say you want to edit where that email goes. Um, go. You can let's say for the contact form. Let's click on edit. I would advise changing this part here. Although if you do understand it a bit, you could change a couple of things. Like um, let's go to the contact page. And let's say you just didn't like the word name and you wanted to have it say first name. I mean, you could, you know, you could you could do that and you should be fine. But I would try to not make too many changes here just because it could affect how the form operates um, and if you don't know what you're doing you can kind of mess things up but what you could edit is where where the email gets sent to the to the to address as well as the from the from I kept the generic just no dash reply it's just an empty email address that looks professional um, but it, it it doesn't exist um, and once you're happy with uh, where it's going to or how it's you know what who it's from I mean you can maybe change RFT to you know represent the entire the entire name in full I'm not sure if email addresses accept um, three words um, mostly just first name last name uh, I know it accepts one one uh, one name um, so you could you know play with this and see where it goes but I kind of kept it uh, generic and industry standard but yeah the email address here where it goes to once you're happy with that save it and you're set so that's contact in a nutshell not too much to edit just the place to edit where you don't want where you want the the form to submit an email to when somebody fills it out um, the next one I want to go over is users and for the sake of security I'm not gonna click on it um, just because anybody could view these videos but um, users basically allows you 
to manage uh, the permission levels of who has access to the website. Um, so far, there are administrators, meaning people who have access to all of them. And I recommend at least keeping me um, on there just so I, I'll be able to make changes. But it is also the place where you can add new users or delete existing users as well as change passwords. And it's pretty straightforward, so I'm pretty sure once you go in and, and click on users, you'll be able to quickly pick up you know, what you can and can't do. And I think the first thing you would want to do is change your password and, and change it often uh, in terms of uh, security purposes. Um, the next thing I want to go over is the slider. So homepage has a couple slides. Same thing with products. Uh, it's got a couple slides as well. Now there are certain pages that only has one image or no images, so not like news has no, so that's not a page that would have slides. But like the contact page only has, it's still a slider. It just has one slide, so it never changes. But you have the option of adding more images so that it will rotate. Um, so let's focus on the home page. Sliders are represented under Siliquai, which is the plugin I use to um, basically use uh, or create the slider mechanism. Uh, and, and I try to name it as, as straightforward as possible. So you have one for stir, innovative, grad, desk maker, and so forth. And I want to edit the home uh, slider. Home slider should have four. And as you can see, there's four, there's four slides here. And it, it's really, really uh, simple. So if you like the order, or if you want to change the order of the slides, you can just click and drag, and, and that will allow you to change the order. Let me just bring that back. You can click on X, and that will delete uh, the slide. And the I, I'm not sure what the I does. So I doesn't seem like it allows you to do anything. Oh, you can also have it so that you can also set an image hyperlink so that you know this was would be an actual clickable link. So if somebody, let's say desk makers, you can have this slide if click go to the desk maker page, uh, and you can just add the hyperlinks through that. Um, in terms of adding new new slides, all you do is drag and drop the image into this box. And there you go, you would have this slide. Now, let's, let's um, delete that one. The one information that you would need to know in order to do that is probably the, is the size of the slide. Um, so the slide the, of the slide, you would go under conf config and it'll tell you it's 901 by 397. So what that means is that this image size here is 901 pixels wide and 307 pixels high. And you also have options to change some configurations like the animations of the slider. Right now it's set to fade and that kind of gives it the fade effect. But you have some other options. Well, I guess you don't have any options. Well, we are using the free version. Um, if you want to change the options, I think you have to pay for the full version. Um, but you should change. It looks like you do have the ability to um, change the duration. So right now it's set to 5,000 milliseconds, meaning it's five seconds between each each slide animation. So if I count to five, um, this will swap. I think it should at least. Maybe I should just refresh the page because I know. Um, oops. Make sure I refresh all the way. All right, looks like something happened. Maybe I made edits where I shouldn't make edits, so I'll need to fix that so that uh, it looks right. This is definitely not good. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay, so since uh, I just investigate the issue and now it's fixed, it should not happen again as long as you make sure that your images that you put in is 901 by 397. So if you go to config, uh, sorry, go to home, edit, go to config, make sure it's three, 901 by 397. The the width here should stay consistent and not get any bigger to push this to the uh, uh, to the bottom. So it's very important to keep this um, keep the image size uh, consistent. And that's and that's the case for all the images on the site. In order to keep that uniform look that we have, uh, you know, for the con uh, for the right of slider images, 
as well as even the content. So like, for example, the about, you know, to keep these images looking the same, it's recommended, highly recommended to keep the dimensions and the image type the same. And I've used uh, JPEGs for all image types. So that's uh, essentially in a nutshell how to edit each of the um, each of the sliders. So like even for the pages that don't have any transitions like this, it'll still be edit edit under Siliqui, uh and you go to the appropriate uh, page, click on edit, and you know you can drag and drop, and that's basically it. It's pretty pretty simple. Um, the last thing I want to go over on this site is backing up the site. Um, backing up the site um, allows you to essentially keep an exact replication of the site. Um, all the images, all your content, and the data, and basically allows you to have a copy of your website onto your machine. Now you'll still need a developer to um, basically revamp it, uh, basically bring it back up, but at the very least if your site got hacked or you did something that's tor like horribly wrong and basically the site's now broken or got corrupted or uh, your hosting decides to go belly up, as long as you have a backup of your website, you always, you'll always have the ability to bring back your website either on a new hosting provider or uh, somewhere else. So in order to do backups, it's really, really simple. Um, you go to backup, uh, backup buddy, and you'll click on complete backup. And I definitely recommend backing up um, ev after every big update um, so that you would have the most recent backup um, that will include all your changes. And uh, we'll wait for this backup to end. Um, should be fast because there's not that much stuff on the site yet. Um, so let's, I'll pause the video right now. So once the, uh, the backup is done, you'll, you'll get blue buttons like this. And then basically you want to click on download backup file. And essentially that will basically do download the backup your, of your website onto your local computer and then keep it in a safe, safe place. And that's, that's it. Uh, so that's how you back, back things up. Um, you know, if you have, if you have really really good hosting provider, they should have automated automated backups already. Um, but you should always have your own backups uh, just in case, you know, they don't have. In, in case your hosting provider doesn't have backup, um, the backup files that are created by Backup Buddy is backing up in a way that makes it very easy for someone to redeploy your website versus a backup that's done by XYZ hosting companies, which might be scattered in terms of how they're backing up their database and how they're backing up all the images and how they're backing up all the WordPress components. It, it, it might be tough to reassemble that when you're trying to bring back a backup while Backup Buddy packages nicely and has a special script to allow redeployment a lot smoother. So. That's uh that's it and that basically covers everything that I would like to cover in in this um you know tutorial that allows you control of what shows up on your website. Uh and it gives you essentially a good 80% of the ability of allowing you to add things to uh to maintain your website.